Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Chris. Good morning. Good morning. How is everyone doing this fine morning? I have a mixed, mixed review. I'm glad, glad to be here this morning. Glad we are here. I'm going to take this off. And uh, I did uh, find in the Post Journal uh, Richard Rich Farr, his obituary. And I'll, I'll post this down on the bulletin board. Um, for everybody to look at later on. Well, it is a good day to come together and to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good day to be here. And uh, the first Sunday after Easter, so this is the first actual Sunday of Easter, the celebration time of Easter. You'll see on the back of your uh, notices, this week we're praying for the Knapp Creek United Methodist Church, Reverend Jerry Piper, his wife Kathy, and their family. Um, now you see Helen Sperry is listed here, but she actually died. Um, she, she died last uh, Sunday on Easter in the afternoon, and they said that she was very peaceful when she died, uh, went home to be with the Lord. <clears throat> and the funeral for that. Was the best person. And, um, she had something called PLS. You know, we've heard of ALS or MS, multiple sclerosis, um, Lou Gehrig's disease. This is PLS, which is primary lateral sclerosis. And all of them affect the communication between your mind and your muscles. And basically, it breaks down over time. And that's what her situation was that eventually the the um, muscles around her mouth and her swallowing muscles just quit working. Um, very, very sad illness and hard to, hard to cope with. Also, uh, the family of Jose from Cuba who passed, Mary Henning, Nancy Weimer, Autumn Miller, Linnaeus. Linnaeus Smith, good news is she's home now. So she's out of rehab, back at home. Martha Gleason, to think about Mark Smith. And... Um, of course, continue to lift up Ashley and Tyler as they are beginning their life together. And Logan going into the Army National Guard. Prayers for Anthony, Bethany, Tori, and Chris. Any other notices that you need to lift up? Our ongoing Bible study is going on Thursday morning. We're going to resume this coming Thursday. And we are in the process of cleaning out. Um, Chris, any update on that? The clean out? Do we... You want to have a work party? Well, not yet. Okay. We got to get the liquid to get their stuff all out of here, and then uh, we'll pay for it. And uh, we're sorting out more rubbish and moves and stuff. And uh, then coming Thursday, I'm going to meet with uh, Lakewood uh, uh, trustees and uh, try to arrange a uh, hopefully arrange a stuff out of here. 
Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, well, uh, let's begin with prayer. Let's begin our worship this morning, and would you pray with me? Thank you for the blessings you give to us. Thank you for the way you inspire us, and you fill us with your spirit, and you fill us with joy. Uh, We want to be a joyful people in you. And so, Lord, we seek your joy Uh, your peace that goes beyond human understanding. Help us to feel that today and help us to experience it all week long. And we ask your blessing on our worship that it would be pleasing to you, Lord. All this we lift up in the name of God, our Father, Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, and in the power and presence of your Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to turn with me to the back of your Hymnal, Psalm 133, on page 850, uh, and it's very short, Psalm 133. Let's read this responsively. Behold how good and pleasant it is when we live together in unity. It is like the dew of Hermon which falls on the mountains of Zion. Let's join in our Gloria Patri, and then we will turn to hymnal number 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love hearts unfold like flowers before the opening to the sun above melt the clouds of sin and sadness drive the dark of doubt away giver of immortal gladness fill us with the light of day all thy works with joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise field and forest vale and mountain flowery meadow flashing sea chanting bird and flowing fountain Call us to rejoice in Thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, All who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other. Lift us to the joy divine. Let's join the mighty chorus which the... 
Love divine is reigning for us, finding all within its span. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us onward in the triumph song of life. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Our first scripture this morning comes out of the book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles, page 833 in your pew Bible, Acts 4, 32 through 35, a very short reading. The believers share their possessions. All the believers were united in heart and mind, and they felt that what they owned was not their own. So they shared everything they had. The apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's great blessing was upon them all. There were no needy people among them because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, this is a Holy Humor Day, Holy Humor Sunday. So I wanted to uh, add somebody to our gathering today. And these are, again, thanks to John Smith for contributing these page of jokes. I'm not going to read the whole page, but a man found a magic lamp with a genie who offered him three wishes. For my first wish, he said, I'd like to be rich. Okay, Rich, the genie replied, what's your second wish? And then uh, wannabe stand-up comic said this, I had my first stand-up gig in front of an audience tonight. It didn't go well, though. I started my bit, and some guy started to heckle me, yelling, hey, you, down in front, we're trying to watch the movie. Another person says this, I, I ordered an extension course called How to Deal with Life's disappointments. Yesterday, I got the first lesson by mail. It was an empty envelope. <laughs> there was another man who took his trained elephant to the circus. Dance, he commanded as the band began to play. And instantly, the elephant began to dance around as the owner of the circus watched him very closely. When the musical number ended, the man turned to the owner. Well, are we hired? He asked. No, the owner replied. The man was stunned. Why not? Because the band was playing a waltz and the elf was doing a mamba. And this last comes from Matt Moran. He says, I used to think my vocabulary was good. Then I got a thesaurus. Now I think it's exemplary. <laughs> Found some words in that. Our prayer time is important uh, for many reasons. It's important to us individually to build our uh, prayer life, our spiritual life, uh, to keep closely connected with with God. uh, um, You know, we can bring our petitions to God anytime. and, uh, And as Christ is interceding on our behalf. Uh, But it's still important that we are constantly... Find times for prayer, uh, both individually and as a corporate body of believers. And so uh, we do need to keep these folks in our in our prayers and the families of those who have lost loved ones. Um, And then uh, any other prayer requests that you'd like to lift up today? Anything specific? Well, let's uh, let's turn to God in our prayers this morning. Would you pray with me?
O oh Lord God, most holy, we, we are thankful that we have been given the gift of laugh, laughter. And of course, I believe, Lord, that you are a God who smiles upon us. You love to interact with us. You love to watch as we interact with one another. God, we thank you for being a loving father. Thank you for sending Christ uh, to the cross for our sake. Thank you for being present to our needs and our desires and for wanting to give us an abundant life, wanting to provide for us and provide for the needs of our, our friends and our family. We are so grateful. So thankful to provide for us. As we, you know, maybe heard the rain last night, as we see the flowers uh, blossoming and sprouting, and the trees just turning their buds, uh, beginning to leaf out, it's, it's an exciting time in the world. And we are so blessed and so grateful that we have eyes to see it, ears to hear, um, that we have tongues to confess what you have done for us. God, we ask your ongoing blessing for those that need healing and care. We, we do lift up the Knapp Creek Church today, Jerry Piper and his wife, Kathy. Pray for your anointing and your spirit to be upon them. Pray for a rich time of worship this morning there. We pray for Lee Sperry and the family on the loss of Helen. We pray for Pastor Jose's family, bring comfort to them. For Rich's family, Rich Farr, God, I pray that you would bless him, uh, bless his family. We are thankful for Mary Henning, she's doing well, for Nancy Weimer, for Autumn Miller. All of those are praises. For Linnea Smith, who's able to be home now, uh, we thank you, God. Uh, we pray for Martha that you would continue to lift her up and bring comfort to her. For Mark Smith, God, pray for his leg complications. I pray for his heart trouble. We do pray for safe travel for anybody who's out there traveling. We uh, lift up again Ashley and Tyler and celebrate their wedding. Pray for many happy years for them. Uh, we pray for Logan going into the Army National Guard and pray for him to be safe and that you would watch over him. Lift up Anthony and Bethany, Tori and Chris, uh, other people who we know that are that are sick with the COVID, Lord. Pray for more availability availability of the of the vaccines, and we thank you for the wisdom of those who know how to manufacture them. God, for all of these many blessings and and answered prayers, we are grateful. And now, Lord, we want to lift up. Our, our own voices and join them together as we pray together the prayer as you taught your own disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, by now you all know we do not collect an offering. Please remember to put your offering in the plates. Um, and I do thank you for the ongoing support. Um, one prayer request that I totally forgot about till just now um, Lucy Arnone contacted me by uh, messenger just to say that uh, Max has a kidney stone, he's in pain, and her sister is getting, a, I believe, a hip replacement this coming week. And so Lucy is in the caregiver role, and we need to keep Lucy and Max and uh, Lucy's sister in our prayers. Um, and we also want to pray and thank God for the blessings he gives and for the offering before we sing our doxology. So let's pray for these things. God, we do remember Lucy in our prayers. We lift 
her and uh, Lucy's sister. We pray that the surgery goes well. I do ask a blessing on Max that you would ease his pain and that you would help Lucy to have strength as she gives care to both of them. God, we also lift up um, all the offerings and ourselves, our very lives, to you. Uh, may they be used for your purposes and your work here and in the world. God, touch our hearts and our lives and bless them and use them. And all of this we pray in the name of God, our Father, in the person of Christ, our Savior, and the power and presence of your Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's sing our doxology from number five, 95 in the hymn book, and then we will do number 318, Christ is Alive. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Okay, all verses. Christ is alive. Christ is alive. Let Christians sing, his cross stands empty to the sky. Let streets and homes with praises ring, his love in death shall never die. Christ is alive, no longer bound to distant years in Palestine. He comes to claim the here and now and dwell in every place and time. Not throned afar, remotely high, untouched, unmoved by human pains, but daily in the midst of life, our Savior in the Godhead reigns. In every insult, rift, and war, where color, scorn, or wealth divide, he suffers still, yet loves the more. And lives though ever crucified. Christ is alive and comes to bring good news to this and every age. Till earth and all creation ring with joy, with justice, love and praise. Amen. Thank you. Well, our sermon title is Our Joy, Your Joy, and it's taken from 1 John, so it's the little tiny epistle way in the back of your hymn book, uh, found on page 941, uh, 1 John 1, verse 1 through 2, verse 2. And I invite you to follow along if you'd like. We proclaim to you the one who existed from the beginning, whom we have heard and seen, 
We saw him with our own eyes and touched him. This one who is life itself was revealed to us and we have seen him. And now we testify and proclaim to you that he is the one who is eternal life. He was with the father and then he was revealed to us. We proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are that you may fully share our joy. This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. My dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is a sacrifice that atones for our sins, and no, not only our sins, but the sins of all the world. May God add his blessing to this, the reading of, of his word, and help us to understand it for today. Well, I have two more jokes that I saved for now. A boy with a shoulder was walking down the road when he passed a policeman who said, Now, now, young lad, I think you had better take that monkey to the zoo. The next day, the boy was walking down the road with the monkey on his shoulder again. When he passed the same policeman, the policeman said, Hey there, I thought I told you to take that monkey to the zoo. The boy answered, Well, I did, sir. Today I'm taking him to the cinema. And one last. Okay. There are four men in the hospital waiting room because their wives are having babies. A nurse approaches the first guy. She says, congratulations, you're the father of twins. That's odd, answers the man. I work for the Minnesota Twins. A nurse then tells the second man, congratulations, you're the father of triplets. Well, that's weird, answers the second man. I work for the 3M company. A nurse goes up to the third man saying, congratulations, you're the father of quadruplets. That's strange, he answers. I work, I work for the Four Seasons Hotel. The last man begins groaning and banging his head against the wall. What's wrong, the others come up and ask. I work for 7-Up. <laughs> oh, goodness. Would you pray with me this morning? Oh, Lord God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditation of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Oh, God, you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I wanted to begin today by reading a part of an interview that happened between Elizabeth Elliot and Nancy Lee DeMoss some years ago. Um, Elizabeth is being interviewed and she says this, I really do believe that every experience, if offered to Jesus, is our gateway to joy. The experience may be taking care of a sick grandfather or taking care of the child who is perhaps going to be lame for life or washing dishes. And of course, every now and then the dishwasher or stove or something else goes on the blink. You just want to throw your hands up and think, how did I get, ever get into this mess? There's something about laundry and godliness, a little ordinary thing which needs to be done. Why shouldn't it be done by me? 
The older I get, the more I appreciate the privilege of having laundry to do, dishes to wash, the house to clean. If we could only realize that all of these which are incumbent upon us and required, when they're offered to Jesus, they really are transformed. There's something totally transforming about it. And she goes on, when you think of it, that little Mary, I always think of her as being between the ages of 12 and 14. She didn't have any quibble. She said, behold, I'm the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it happen as you say, or let it be done to me according to your word. And she says in modern English, anything you say, Lord, here I am. Do anything you want with me. And uh, I don't know if you recognize the name, if you know who she is. Uh, the interviewer goes on to say, she's the woman whose husband was killed as a missionary when he went down to minister to a tribe of South American natives, uh, the Aka Indians. And he and, and four other men went in to share the gospel and the Indians who were Headhunters basically killed him. Um, more about her in a little while. Uh, yesterday, as I was reading my daily devotional in Our Daily Bread, uh, the writer was Patricia Raybon. She talked about how C.S. Lewis had uh, resisted praising God at one point in his life. He, he resisted it because he felt like it was a, a demand being placed upon him. You know, you must praise God. And then he came to, to the realization that it was in this act of praising that we find and discover what joy is about, what joy in life is about. It becomes kind of like a mirror that reflects back the joy and love of the Father. So he turned around his attitude after uh, he discovered that. In the Old Testament, Habakkuk, the, the Old Testament prophet, he discovered the same thing. Um, at the very end of his writing, when all the energy, he could still find it in him to praise God. So this is chapter 3, 16 through 19. He says, I hear and my body trembles. My lips quiver at the sound. Rottenness enters in my own body. I will quietly wait for the day of trouble to come upon those people who invade us. Though the fig trees do not blossom, nor fruit beyond the vines, the produce of the olive uh, groves fail, and the, yield, the fields will yield no food. The flock are cut off from the fold. There is no herd in the stalls. Yet, despite all of this, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like deer's feet. He makes me tread upon the high places. And I fully expect that over this past year or over the past month or maybe this past week, you have had some hard times. And perhaps at some point you lost your joy. Maybe you woke up, you could not find it in you to praise God even a little bit. Maybe you had a fight with someone dear to you and it seemed that irreparable harm had been done, like you could never get back to that place where you were. I was reading a book uh, by Joni Erickson Tata, and it was all about how she, how she battled to the point of praise. Uh, it told how her husband had used the good tweezers, her good tweezers, to pick the fleas off of the dog. And when she discovered this, she says he didn't even clean them with alcohol or anything. He just put them back in her drawer. And she blew up and she got mad. She started yelling at him. And uh, his name is Ken. And he got mad. And he starts to yell at her. And you know it, they are butting heads and they are having a big fight that started with his using the tweezers inappropriately, she felt. Well, they blew up. He left the room. After a time, he he sat on the edge of her bed, and she was still mad at him, really mad. And she said to him, I don't like you right now. And he was mad at her still, and he said, I don't like you right now. And she said to him, what are we going to do? And he said, let's pray. 
And they turned, he started, he started praying, and he wasn't really being sincere at the beginning, but he turned all his attention on God and God's glory and God's goodness and his own need for humility, his own stubbornness. And as he began to pray, the atmosphere in the room changed. And you could just sense it, that it changed. And then Joni began to play, pray also, and, and her heart softened. And before you know it, they were both praying, and they felt a sense of burden that was on them both lift and raise. Because they turned from anger and fighting to prayer. And they put God back in the middle of their relationship. The writer of 1 John starts this letter from a position of knowing and seeing God in the flesh, manifested, incarnated, made real before them. And so he shares from the heart what that means to them and to all of us. And by sharing this personal, intimate knowledge of who God is in Christ, they're inviting the reader or the listener to join in the fellowship, to become of something larger than just yourself. The writer, we believe, it was John the Apostle, had the heart of a pastor. And we pick that up on that second chapter as he starts it. He says, my dear children. You know, he's talking like he's caring about these people deeply. He wants the best for them. He wants to communicate about the life of the world, about the difference that he's made in his life. And what it can mean to all of us. He really cares. He really does. My sermon title comes because there's a little footnote in your Bible. Uh, if you look in your Bible at, at verse 4, it says, And we are writing this that our joy may be complete. But the footnote then says, Some versions reflect the phrase, We are writing this that your joy may be complete. And then our New Living Translation says this, we are writing these things so that you may fully share the joy that we already have. Isn't that great? He wants all of us to experience true joy, to know the truth, to live, live in the truth, to experience that truth, and the joy that comes from being in the truth. He's inviting us all into the light. To be free from sin. To be filled with light through the love of Jesus Christ. Can we experience true joy if we are living in sin? Are we somehow cutting off the blessings and joy of God when we live in sin? Well, we know that God cannot abide sin. And it was sin that caused the break from God in that garden at the very beginning. We know that Satan wants us to be apart from God. Satan wants us to worship him, not God. John's words are strong when he says in verse 9, But if we confess our sins to Jesus, he is faithful and just. He will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all our wickedness. It's not the work that began at the cross. Later on, he says this, if we do sin, we have an advocate. We have one in heaven who pleads our case before the Father, Jesus Christ. He died on that cross for this purpose, to atone for our sins. Yours and mine. When Satan thought he had won the battle... You know, he thought he defeated Christ. He saw him hanging on the cross. And Satan thought he'd won. But in that moment that seemed like defeat, Christ was taking the victory for each one of us. Taking on our sins and becoming that atoning, perfect sacrifice. The only thing that would work. The only thing that God needed was that sacrifice to make things right between us and God. It was needed... To once and for all clear our name before God the Father. Now here's the best news about all of this. That is exactly in the ordinary moments of life that we can experience the joy of salvation in Jesus Christ. 
Elizabeth Elliot said it this way, if we could only realize that all of these which we are incumbent upon us and required of us, when they're offered to Jesus, they really are transformed. The simple things of life become transformed when we have the right attitude, when we're offering first to Christ and saying, I want to do this job for your glory. I want to do the simplest job, whatever it is, the most menial task. I want to do it for your glory, God. So I explained how she was the missionary of Jim Elliot. He was killed by those natives. But what you might know is that she and work among those native Indians for two years, for two years, and share the good news of Christ, the light of the world. She wanted to bring those natives out of darkness into light. You, you might say, was well, yeah, it was. Um, the interviewer at the time, speaking about her parents, said, ask, you know, what did your parents think when you told them you're going to go back to that village. And he says, they accepted the fact that you were going to be a missionary, right? They may have even rejoiced in that. But then when you said, after your husband had been martyred by these Aka Indians, I'm going into that village. And Elizabeth said this, it was hard on them. It was very hard on Jim's parents as well. I got letters from both sides. Jim's and mine, very graciously, very carefully cautioning me strongly, don't even think of going in there unless you feel absolutely sure that this is what God is wanting you to do. I took that very seriously, she says. I prayed about it, as I realized that it might be that God would want me to go in there for some reason. He was going to have to show me why and how. I didn't see how it would ever work. You know, if five men were killed, it didn't make sense that one would go back in there and come back alive. But that's exactly what happened. She went in risking her life. And it was not an easy decision. It was, she felt, the decision that God wanted her to do. To go back. Try to reach these natives with the gospel of Christ. Well, we don't have to travel to South America necessarily to experience the joyous praise and the work of God, we can experience it now, here, every day, any day. But it's important that we understand what is behind the joy that Elizabeth feels, that C.S. Lewis felt, that Habakkuk felt, that John the Apostle felt, you know, um, that feeling of joy. In the other service, we sang that old camp, I think it's a camp song or a children's song, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And this is it. Uh, where do we find that joy? How do we get that joy down in our heart? It's only from knowing Jesus. And it's from being in his will. And turning your life to him, but also giving the little things that you're doing over to him and saying, you know what, God, I may not like doing this job. There are parts of this job I don't care for, but I'm doing it for you. I'm giving it to you. Let me do it and let you be glorified through me. And when we do that, when we do that, you know, it makes our joy complete makes our joy complete in the body of Christ. Share the joy of the Father for the Son and of the Son for the Father and all of it wrapped up in the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit. I have to share one little thing about Elizabeth Elliot. When she was about 10 years old, uh, their missionaries came and stayed with her family for a time. Uh, Betty Stam, she says, I remember Betty Stam visiting our home. It wasn't until I learned she and her husband had been killed by Chinese communists that I realized what missionary life was really meant to be. The fact that that lady had sat at our dinner table was just stunning to me. 
I was 10 years old. My father came home with the Philadelphia newspaper telling me about John and Betty Stam. They had been captured by Chinese communists. They were marched through the streets of this village, and she had to watch while they chopped her husband's head off. And then they put her head on the chopping block, and they had her head cut off as well. She says, to think that that lady had sat at our dinner table made it just unbelievable. It was when I was about 12 or 13, I came across her prayer, and then I wrote my own prayer. And this is what, what Elizabeth wrote at, at the age of 12 or 13, so she was very young. Lord, I give up my own plans and purposes, all my own desires and hopes, and accept thy will for my life. I give myself, my life, my all, utterly to thee, to be thine forever. Fill me with thine Holy Spirit. Use me as thou wilt. Send me where thou wilt, and work out thy whole will in my life at any cost, now and forever. What a prayer. What a prayer. And, and that, that prayer actually reminds me powerfully of the prayer that John Wesley used in his covenant services. And at the end of the conference, he would ask, if you feel strongly, you pray this prayer with me. And we are dedicating our lives to Christ and saying, Christ, use me, take me, use my life, however you would like to use it. That's a powerful powerful prayer, accepting the responsibility of your faith, accepting that Christ may use you in surprising ways. Christ may have unusual gifts that he's given you that you're going to find useful uh, for his kingdom, for his glory, for his honor. But we have to turn our life to him. We have to give it to him. And that's the hard part. You know, that step of saying, Lord, use me however you want to use me. And it's not easy, but he does ask us, what will you do for me for the kingdom? And how will you find that joy in your heart, deep in your heart to stay? It's by finding and doing the will of Christ and listening to God day by day. Would you pray with me today? Oh, Lord God, we are humbled at the life of witness of this woman, Elizabeth Elliot. And we think about having joy deep down in our hearts and having that joy shine out of us uh, to light up your dark world. Lord God, give us strength and joy to do the work that you ask. Us. Lord, let the joy of the love of Christ shine out of our lives. And we pray and ask all of this through Christ our Savior. Amen. Well, one of the things we know for a fact is that we are not alone, but we can lean on the everlasting arms of Christ. Uh, he is there to sustain us, to support us. And this is hymn number 133 in the uh, hymn book. Let's sing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What a fellowship! What a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day. 
leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all our leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Meaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Would you join me in the benediction? Lord God, let your face smile upon us. Let your joy fill us. Let the joy of the Lord fill us each morning and each night. And let us go from here rejoicing in you, Lord, in the way that you love us, the way you care for us, day by day. We pray it all in the name of God. Amen. Okay. 